Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D-Oracle.com. That's Ord-Oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, I sent you over five charts. Did you get them? I sure did, man. Of course, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's a, yeah, this is starting to be interesting now, what's it going is. on here. Um, we'll do the chart number one. We'll kind of look look at the bigger time frames, and we'll kind of hone it down okay. to the smaller time frames. But, you know, chart one, uh, this is a weekly uh, SPY is going to uh, back to, I don't know, 2017. And I marked the times when the... Uh, in the pink areas there, yes, or red lines, whatever. Those times when the six-three day average of the trend hit one or lower, and each, you know, and this chart goes back, you know, um, what two thousand so, what about seven years or whatever, six years, yes. And each each time it's got down to to one or lower on the uh, six-three day average, the mark was nearing a high, and so matter of fact, last. Uh, January 2022, uh, it got, uh, I marked it there in, in right, light uh, pink, and it picked out that high. Actually, the market was kind of going down, and the trend was not going up, and that was a really a, a bearish sign. So, okay. Um, anyhow, currently, we're at one, and anything one or below is usually on the intermediate term time scale, since this is a weekly chart, we could be heading for trouble. Doesn't okay. mean we will, because market still can go up. But uh, it's a warning sign. That's all it is. There's right. no sell signal here. It's just a warning sign. Uh, so now, if we can, we flip to uh, chart two. Okay. There we are. And oh, this and this uh, the bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio. There's no five week moving average, and it's on a weekly time frame also. So I'm still in the weekly time frame, kind of looking what the market's doing, and. Uh, the SPX VIX ratio, if you notice, all those tops going back to uh, 2018, when the S&P made a higher high and the SP, SPX VIX ratio made a lower high, that's a divergence, and that's something to warn that you're probably going into some sort of a high. And the important thing I want to point out here, if you notice, the market on a weekly time frame really hasn't changed much over the last uh, month. I mean, we're off a little bit from the highs, but not much. But if you look at the SPX VIX ratio uh, currently, which is in light blue there, yes. circled in red, we really took a big dive on that ratio. Um, right. So that's really a warning sign. Last time we did something like that, came in at the 2022 high and also back at the uh, uh, two, uh, 2022 high. And also back at the 2022 high or 20 high. Okay. Both the uh, that ratio took. So to me, uh, this is a really a kind of a warning. Um, so J July, actually, if you do seasonality work, July 27th all the way to October, uh, I think 7th or 27th is the weakest period of the year senior, senior uh, seasonality wise. And so we're not quite there yet, far as seasonality goes, but we're starting to get warning signs on the six three day average of the trend, and now the SBX fix ratio is also uh, uh, showing possibly divergence, which so, is pretty cool because I, we're only five ten, we're only sixteen trading days away from that date. Right, we're right it. Yep. So, but what's what's important here now? I'm thinking the market's still going to hit another new higher high okay. probably this month. Yeah. Um, and I'll show you why on the next chart. Okay. But if we go up and hit an, another higher high in the in the coming weeks, I think probably could happen next week, and this SPX VIX ratio makes a lower high, Right. then that, to me, is the time to really look seriously for a, a worthwhile high. Yeah. And so uh, the next week, maybe two weeks, will tell the story. And if you flip to the next chart, so now we're, now we're to, down to the days here. But um, uh, if you notice, going into this Monday, we were five days up in a row. Um, I, I keep track of those days. When yes. Five days in a row, the market uh, will make a higher high within five days, 85% of the time. 
last time we had something like this, we were up six days in a row going into uh, mid uh, June, and I was saying on your show that we should make a higher high within five days. Well, it never made a higher high in five days, but it did make a higher high, you know, like about ten days. Uh, so, don't know if this eight five percent chance will make a higher high within the next five days. In other words, a week from Monday. Um, a week from this Monday, which would be next Monday, would make a higher high. Don't know for sure that's happened, but probably you got really an 85% chance we'll make a higher higher high probably within a, a few days. And if you notice, today we went back and tested the gap area uh, that we had, uh, see, Monday be last Friday. The market yeah. had a big day up and uh, created a gap. We're testing that gap. When I sent this chart to you, the trend at the time was 2.11 with 1,028 down tick readings. Now, that was early this morning. But the important thing here is is how the volume, the volume to close that gap and for the market to continue lower has to be equal volume compared to where the gap was. Well, the gap uh, had uh, like close to over 100 million shares. We're not even coming close to that. So probably... If you test a gap on at least 10% lighter volume, that gap's going to have support. Right. We also have uh, ticks and trend here, at least in the morning. I haven't checked them here in the last couple of hours, but most likely we'll have a high trend reading today and also probably a high tick, suggesting that gap has support. And with the five days going higher, and predicting the market will be higher within a week, maybe a week and a half, uh, there's a good chance we're probably going to hit a higher high. We find gap support. we got panics and ticks and trend. Uh, so there's quite a bit of evidence that, you know, we're going to at least touch a new high uh, probably next week. Uh, so that would be kind of um, important. So going back to the chart number two, go back there. So that's the reason why I think we're going to hit another higher high. Okay, chart two, and Tim, is the... Yeah. One second. Okay. Yeah, chart two. Yep. Now going back to that, so if we hit a higher high on the s and P's, that ratio on the bottom does not hit a higher high. In other words, it makes a lower high. And that's the divergence on the weekly time frame. And the weekly right. time frame uh, suggests, you know, we, we could have a uh, some sort of a high that could last weeks, you know, because you're dealing with a weekly time frame. Right. So, um, yeah, don't just, know if that's just, all going to happen, but... It yeah, could. and you know, that, t that uh, trend reading, you know, I mean, we, we hit we hit 209... What, 209, we hit at 10 o'clock, and then we hit uh, 207, you know, 20 minutes later. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. Oh, welcome back, folks. Uh, Tom O'Brien, Tim Wood, we do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 356, NASDAQ's off 113, S&Ps are off 37. You know, Tim, uh, it'd be pretty cool... You know, we have the downdraft today, right? It comes into the gap, yeah. and then you reach a higher high because what would end up happening is that the next downdraft, the whole world will think, okay, this is going to get shaken off too, right? <laughs> and and that's the one that does it probably, right? If we're getting closer right, to a high, yeah. Right, yeah. So, you know, I'm looking at the trend right now. Is putting uh, We're talking here. I got a 1.49 trend and a 284 down tick reading. Uh, so if we close there, you know, we've got a, quite a bit of information that you're, you're hitting support. And if you look, if you, you compare the volume to that gap of last Friday's up, yes. you know, we're testing that gap on a, on you know, a heck of a lot lighter volume. The day's not over yet, but we're not going to reach the volume we had last Friday where the gap occurred. Right. So there's information. Plus, there's five days up going into last Friday. Yes, and that predicts market will be higher. You know, eighty-five percent of the time within you know five, but probably next week sometime. Right. So there's quite a bit of information that you're probably hitting support right here, right now, and uh, and we'll probably see a rally, new highs, and you, you know you may see all the hoopla. But the key will be uh, on that chart number two on the SPX VIX ratio on the weekly time frames. Okay. So if you make a higher high and that ratio makes a lower high, just like in the past. Yeah, uh, you know, you'll have a divergence and you'll have some sort of a, a correction. How big the correction will be, I don't know. I mean, if I think the worst case scenario, if you draw a, a trend line right around that 120 on the SPYs, that's pretty that's pretty good support in that range because that's approximately where all the previous highs were. 
So to me, that's about the worst case scenario. Then from oh, there, that, that, I think this the, year. Uh, what was uh, the number again on the spy? Right around one twenty area. If, if you, yeah, it's a little bit less, probably one seventeen. Oh, you're before, talking about the uh, ratio, though, right? Uh, I'm sorry. 420. 420. No, you 420. have people. People already just jumped out windows, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> right. Holy kid. Yeah, sorry, 420. <laughs> you know, probably 417, 418. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, you got to so, love yeah. it. Yeah, I see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Let me put that up. Cool, man. Okay. Yep. So, anyhow, that's, that's uh, to me, that's the worst case scenario. And, you know, We'll get, you know, the market will beat itself up between now and, you know, seasonality sure. works out. You know, this could run into October, you know, mid-October, maybe September. I don't know. Uh, well, you, you know, it's so the, cool, the man. The whole thing is just like, you know, last time, you know, once you get near lows, you know, panic is happening. And the, and the more panic you get, the better it is for the market. Yes. The panic's like fuel. So yes. So whatever that correction be, once you start seeing where the panic is, uh, on the you know the trend and the ticks and you know and right. whatever, uh, that's where sports coming in at, and so we had a lot of panic around that one seventeen to one or excuse us, uh, four seventeen to four twenty area. Yep. And probably once you have panic in a certain area, that panic will re reform or refirm or form again at that level. So I'm thinking four twenty is. Yeah, pretty good. Because that when you did when you did the workshop for us, we don't even have a top yet. No, I know when you did the workshop. That's exactly what you explained and how many times it came down to that level. What's so cool about what you do, Tim, is that you know you have we have that number, but then you have the verifications on the ratios also. You know to bring your probability up that okay, you know here we go, we're coming into a low again, and on the opposite side, it's just like this. Is that okay? You know, we know how deviant the market is, <laughs> meaning that, yeah. you know, just like I said, you come down here, then all of a sudden, you know, you go up, you take it out, and then all of a sudden you get down and the whole world, as I said, is just going to say, oh, no, 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 we're going to just keep going when that will be the, you know, the other side of it. So pretty cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, we can cover uh, if you want to go on or we have questions about the, these or these charts or we can just go on. No, these are the, I think he's explained is great. OK, so I'm ready to go on. Which one would you like? Uh, let's see, we, we got five charts, so be chart number four. Okay. Yeah, this this will make life simple here. Yep. Uh, this this is a fifty day average of the uh, advanced decline for GDX, advanced decline percent for GDX. Uh, that's the uh, second window below the GDX chart, and the bottom window is GDX up down volume with fifty day average, and that's percent. So. In a nutshell, whenever the bottom window, which is the up-down volume, 50-day average, the up-down volume, advanced climbing indicators, gets below minus 20, the market's at support. Doesn't mean it's going to go up, but we're at support. And that happened every time going back to 2010. Uh, so quite a few times there, the red line shows the times when that happened. And back in uh, mid-June, the uh, the 50-day average up-down volume uh percent hit below minus minus 20 uh just like the other time so either so now we're either flip sideways or we go up so that's your choices you don't you don't get another choice that mark's going to go down mark's done going down yeah. so now you you go to another chart and that's chart number five and uh, probably should have took it back further but anyhow, the bottom window is the 18-day uh, average of the advanced decline. The next higher window is the 18-day uh, or er, yeah, 18-day average of the up-down volume. In a nutshell, when both those indicators are above minus 10, the market is in an uptrend. When both those indicators are below minus 10, the market is in a downtrend. And the uptrend identified with uh, blue. And the downtrend identified with light pink. Okay. And uh, so, right now we've been, we've been uh, both of them have to go above minus ten to get the rally going. And yesterday or the day before, we did close above minus ten on both of them. And today we're back below minus ten on both of them. Well, we're not going to keep going down because the 50-day average says we're at the bottom, so we're flipping sideways. Yeah. So 
Uh, so either we're, we're going to go sideways here a little bit longer, uh, or we're going to start closing above minus 10. But as long as both those indicators close above minus 10, the uptrend's intact. Uh, so now we, we're kind of bouncing around that, that minus 10 range. And so we're not really going down. We're not going up. We're kind of going sideways. But once you stay above minus 10 on both indicators, the uptrend will continue. Uh, Which, so, you know, it's interesting, Tim, because the gold market loves doing that too, man, going sideways, drive everyone out of their minds, right? And then all of a sudden it takes right. off. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, then it takes off. And so I'm kind of watching this indicator. I was kind of bullish yesterday. Well, it didn't happen. You know, now we're below 10. Well, ironically, seasonality uh, flips bullish on uh, on uh, gold starting uh, July 7th. You know, this is over like 50 years, so it's yes. like. That July seventh could be July first, all the way probably to end of July right. on a seasonality scale. But sure. July seventh historically is past that number has been bullish for uh, gold and runs into July twenty seventh or not July twenty seventh, but October twenty seventh. Yeah. So it starts July seventh and runs to October twenty seventh. Just the opposite of, of the gold market, right? Or uh, of, of the equity market, which is bearish in that time frame. Which is really cool. Well, listen, Tim, yep. this is always a pleasure. Don't forget, folks, you can uh, get Tim every trading day at ORD, ORD-Oracle.com. He's on every Thursday. It's a great newsletter. Go, so go check it out. Tim, you have a great one, a safe one. We look forward to speaking to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right there.